Hey everyone, this is Kevin with English Roundtable Podcast, and I'm joined with Zane. How you doing today, Zane? Good morning. Nice to be here. I'm doing well. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, first thing I have to ask, what kind of watch are you wearing? Because uh, if you haven't listened, we uh, talked about watches in one of our last episodes. You're a big collector, so what do you got? Uh, okay, today I've got, uh, it's, a, it's a Casio, uh, obviously. Okay. Um, got to be a Casio. Uh, this is a one of their higher end dive watches. Okay. So it's uh, it's got digital tracking on it, uh, mm-hmm. dive meter. Uh, you can you can see the depth that you've been oh, down yeah. to, That's and nice. it tracks your uh, your your history. Like it logs everything. Uh-huh. Uh, full titanium body, so pretty strong. Oh, very nice. Yeah. What's the uh, the depth? The meter? Uh, this one records up to 200 meters, so oh, okay. it's, it's certified to 200 meters. So it's pretty deep. It's, it's decent. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a lot deeper than. I'll ever need to go. <laughs> exactly. so, yeah. It'll but, do the uh, trick. Yeah. You've got the, the Apple Watch yeah, on there. Yeah, I'm, uh, I like it. I, I, you know, we've talked in, again, the past episode. I like watches as well. And I really would like to get back to, like, timepieces and wearing certain styles. But I don't, man, once I got the Apple Watch, it just it synchronizes so easily with, you know, the phone. And I don't know. I can't get away from it. They are honest. amazing. <laughs> uh, I don't have one. Uh, I did borrow one uh, off a friend for a little while, and I was just, it was almost too much for me because yeah, it, yeah. it's, I would never have thought that you could have that amount of technology on your wrist. It's everything, uh, yeah. <laughs> it is everything. It's like if you know uh, Dick Tracy, you know, he had the uh, the watch telephone. That's right. And I mean, that's where we're at. It's pretty wild. That is where we're at. Yeah. Pretty wild. So I can't separate from it. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I can understand why you do love it so much. Yeah. I mean, we are pretty much cyborgs at this point, it, right? It's, it's got <laughs> to that stage, um, yeah. for better or worse. I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's not the topic, cyborgs, that we're going to have today. Um, today, I would like for us to talk about comedy, all styles. We're talking stand-up, movies, television, what have you. So uh, I figure let's always start at the base, the ground level, and uh, how we got interested in comedy. And uh, would you like to share first? Yeah, certainly. So as uh, as some of you may know, I am from Australia, and Australia has an interesting uh, comedy background, at at least with my uh, understanding of it. So because Australia is essentially an English colony, um, Mm. when I was growing up, uh, I was... uh, Brought up with a lot of the English comedy from the 70s. Uh, so like Some Mothers Do Have em, um, things like that. Uh, later on, there was things like Blackadder and obviously Mr. Bean was in there as well. Um, so I grew up with a lot of the, the early uh, 70s uh, mm. English comedy. Okay. Uh, and then later on, got exposed to other stuff from the US. So Okay, very yeah. good, very good. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little bit of the same. We have a little bit of age difference, so bit, yeah. I don't remember the 70s as far as that goes. I remember mm. I got into the reruns of more of the uh, like sitcoms, yeah. those types. Maybe not sitcoms, but especially like uh, Samson and Son. Yeah, uh, yeah. The I remember Jeffersons, watching a little bit of that. Those types of shows. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, then I went into Black Adder. Yeah. And oh, Mr. so you got Bean. Black Adder. Yeah, yeah. Nice. In America, we have <clears throat> what's called... PBS, Public Broadcasting Service. Yeah, I'm familiar with PBS. Yeah. So. so it's all free, and for some reason, like every weekends, they would have like a British comedy block. Right. In the evening times. Yeah. So that's when Blackout would come on. Nice. Um, yeah, Mr. Bean. I can't remember. There's a few. I'm others. struggling to. I'm, so, I did yeah. some research earlier today, as I mentioned before, and I'm I'm just struggling to to, to the names aren't coming to me. Right. Um, well, that's okay. We can move uh, forward in the years. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Later on. Um, in terms of English comedy, things like Black Books. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I know uh, it, yeah. That's, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, that's uh, good. Red Dwarf as well. I know that uh, one, 80s yeah. and 90s. Mm-hmm. So of course, Mon- like Monty Python. Monty Python. I can't, I can't that's, forget just how, to name yeah, them. <laughs> how could I not mention Monty yeah. Python? So that's the kind of stuff that I was first introduced to. And I can remember watching, uh, watching that stuff uh, when I was sort of 10, 11 years old. So that's kind of okay. my first introduction. You know, it, I was... I would I got into the older older stuff like uh, the Marx Brothers right, those movies right. and Abbott Costello, and the Three Stooges yeah classic I was like you know child I'd loved watching those because right. they're they're kind of that you know it's a lot of movement and action because there mm. wasn't a lot of talking you know especially back then they didn't have that's a lot right. of speaking parts I don't think for they television had the, or movies you know the recording technology to to put that in right. back then so yeah so uh, just the uh, the physicality of it was really good I even got into uh, like the 
uh, The Silence, of course, Buster Keaton. And I'm a really big Harold Lloyd fan. Right. Do you know Harold Lloyd? I know the name. If um, you rem- There's a very uh, iconic picture from the, those times of movies, and he's hanging from a clock tower. I don't know if you've seen that. I've seen that. But that's Harold that's Lloyd. Him. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when I saw him, it just that's what really just blew my mind. I really enjoyed those. And that's what, for me, that's actually what kind of started me into right. the comedy, the physicality of it all. Okay, so you've gone back a long way. Yeah, I really like the old stuff. Uh, Buster Keaton, you mentioned yes, there. Yes. Ah, big fan. Um, oh, really? Discovered him recently, actually, purely by accident. Uh, yeah. Thank you, YouTube, for that yeah. one. <laughs> Doing all his, his uh, own Amazing stunts. stunts. Yeah. Um, the stuff that he did back then mm. puts modern stunts to shame. And it was all actually happening there was no um stop footage or anything like that like they were all timed real stunts yeah and if they didn't go right he could have easily died so yeah yeah just amazing stuff that he was doing back then yeah he was was his own stunt man (laughs) he was everything just amazing he uh he actually there's a story i think it's true (laughs) we'll have to search it but (laughs) that he broke his back and he didn't know it for years right because he just went through so much pain uh, through all of his stunts and through all of the things that he had to do for his films. Imagine that. Yeah. The other thing that you mentioned that I liked is, because it's all real, is mm. they had to use camera tricks mm. for a lot of them, you know, so it would look real like maybe someone's falling off a building, but actually it was just the way the, the camera was yeah. angled. Yeah. That kind of stuff I really like. So early use of technology yeah. as well. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's uh, it's amazing. I just stumbled upon him one night fairly really? recently and ended up watching watching him for hours, just clip after clip after clip, and it's great. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah so I, I'm a recent recent uh, fan of his. All right, there yeah. you go. Yeah, like you mentioned, uh, it actually it, it beats all of the kind of uh, stunts that you might see today because it's all CGI or it's it's on a sound stage, so it's not real. That's um, right. But yeah, I like the real stuff. That's what really excites me. It, so. it was guaranteed realness with him. Yeah. That's what I like. These days, you don't know. You don't, you, you don't know. It's, right. I mean, there's obviously some danger to modern stunts, mm-hmm. but I mean, back then it was genuine. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that for me, that was kind of okay. where I got led to. Um, and then of course, like for, for America, at least in the eighties, nineties, the huge boom of comedy movies just came out. Yeah. And like uh, Saturday night, Saturday night live, Saturday night live kind of yeah. pushed that forward. Yep. Like a sketch show. Yeah. Um, we didn't get Saturday Night Live oh, in yeah. Australia, unfortunately, but I, I'm familiar with people like Chevy Chase and okay, uh, right. all of those guys and a lot of people that, um, was it John Belushi or mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so, the Blues Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Blues Brothers, that kind of thing. Yeah. They all got their start on, uh, Saturday Night Live, I think, didn't they? Or? Yeah. Most Bill Murray. Bill Murray as, as well. well. Yeah. 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 A lot of those guys that had that huge boom and some of them still do like Bill Murray. Mm. Yeah, they all started pretty much on Saturday Night Live, and that's how they got big. So that, that was a, re- and it still is a huge Kickstarter for a lot of right. sketch comedy and stand-up comedians. So it's still going. Yeah, still going. I think okay. it's. I mean, that was in the '70s. So we're looking at forty. Wow. Years, forty that's plus years. Pretty good longevity in, in this modern <laughs> right. age that it's still uh, relevant enough to keep going. So yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah, and then as I got older, of course, cartoons started becoming. You know, well, they had Looney Tunes. Yep. Of course, but. Yep. Like the Simpsons, that's when everything's really hit. Yeah, and then you got South Park, yep. and then you know, all of those other shows. Family yeah. Guy came from it. Um, but yeah, those those really really got me going when I was young, um, as far as comedy goes. Absolutely the yeah. same. The Simpsons for me was a game changer. Yeah, uh, when I, I first got onto that. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, I can remember watching The Simpsons as as far back as my memory goes so oh, really? from when I was a little kid fortunately enough that was uh, on TV on free to air network oh, okay. every day so I can remember watching that coming home from school watching that religiously yeah <laughs> so, so good it was Simpsons uh, then they had an Australian show Neighbours in between that okay. and then Seinfeld for half well, an hour or an hour yeah, so it was yeah. such a good lineup that is good um, not good for my homework but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, fantastic yeah Seinfeld was the other one I was going to mention yeah. and, and then you know a lot of people I guess that don't speak English it's hard to get there's so much sarcasm mm. embedded in it mm. so so much um, but I, I think it's one of the best comedy shows you know absolutely amazing 
Um, Larry David is, yeah. for me, about as good as sketch show writers and, and comedy writers get. I, I haven't yeah. seen anything or heard anything better. So he's same. the benchmark at the moment for me. So Yeah, same. Yeah, Larry David, if you're uh, just listening, maybe I think Seinfeld is in Japan now on Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure I saw it recently. So Larry David was the co-creator of Seinfeld, and he's gone off to be one of the, I mean, most funny people they would say in maybe the world top i'd put him up there yeah. i can't think of anyone who tops him at the moment yeah. <laughs> he's, he's up there he's up there um we should probably mention curb your enthusiasm as well for those right. people listening who are interested in some more current larry david work um i know you can find that on you next if anybody has you next uh okay. i'm watching it on you next at the moment they've got most of the series of curb your enthusiasm on there there you go is it so is it translated or is it is. subtitles? It's subtitles. Okay. Subtitles. I would love yeah. to hear the dub version, though. <laughs> I, I can't imagine how that would work. Yeah. But, um, I guess a lot of that is sort of physical comedy situations as well and just right. the things that he gets into and pointless debates about things that don't matter. Yeah. Kind of like Seinfeld a yeah, little bit. Yeah, but, it really is. Um, I don't know how Seinfeld would do here. Do you think it would be all right? Well, that's or? the thing. I've tried to – I think um, – some of the classes that I used to teach, they used Seinfeld as an example right. um, in one of the, I don't know, classes, but okay. I don't really know how well it went over. I remember doing it once or twice and the students having really no idea what's going on mm. because it really is a little deep. You it, know, th it can be, yeah. You know, the comedy yeah. has nuance yeah. and it's got, again, sarcasm. And I think it was just difficult to catch what was actually happening or like what, what we were supposed to be laughing at. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. Like yeah, there's multiple yeah. themes per episode, and there's a lot of recurring themes that can last right. the entire series sometimes. Yeah, a lot but of callbacks. That's right, sure. that's right. And if you hadn't been watching the whole thing, it wouldn't make any sense to you. Yeah, that's but. a good point. <laughs> Very good point. So uh, let's dive into another side of comedy Certainly. with stand-up comedy. Right. Um, I know we've talked off-air. Right. I'm a huge fan. I know you are as well. Yep. Um how about that? Do you remember who you kind of first started listening to or who kind of sparked your interest in stand-up? Okay. Ooh, that's a tough one in terms of my first memories of stand-up. Or just um, someone that maybe catapulted your uh, your full interest that you wanted to keep, okay. keep listening. I did actually see when I was younger, I was a Jim Carrey fan. Oh, uh, right, the Mask, yeah. Dumb and Dumber, that kind of thing. Mm. And I remember seeing some of his early stand up when right. I was a kid and I thought, Hey, this is actually pretty good. Mm. He's not just a sort of slapstick, silly actor. He can actually get up on stage and, mm. um, perform a recent, a decent show. Yeah. Uh, so he's, that's one of my earliest memories. Then I got into people like Carlin and Bill Hicks and, uh, very adult political yeah. comedy <laughs> like that. Uh, fairly early on, I can remember watching that in sort of late elementary school and uh, junior high school. Mm. And those guys changed my life, so to speak, yeah, just hearing right. them uh, make everyday situations and, and very political hot topics, uh, make jokes about them. Mm. It made me realize that, hey, it, it doesn't have to be serious all the time. You can right. enjoy these themes, even though they are super political and um, controversial. So, right. Yeah. Well, I think that's why I like stand-up so much is because it can take these serious situations that get totally out of context, pulled out of context, especially these days, and they're able to make a joke out of it. That's right. And have comedy to it. And then they actually make, you know, they make it make sense through laughter. Yeah. Which is even better. Yeah. And... Yeah, that's something, especially like in Japan, I don't think it would, it doesn't, it, I don't think it translates, or I don't think it can translate very well. I can't imagine it doing very well. Um, I, I often watch people like Hicks and Carlin on YouTube, and I've played my wife some of the clips, and she kind of laughs a little bit at it, mm. but I don't think it really gels with what she's used to, possibly, right, right. so. Well, I'm thinking um, even in Japan, I don't in, in a moment, we're, we're going to go through the uh, different styles of comedy in Japan that yeah, they have. Yeah, definitely. But I, I just don't think even in the Japanese language it could work. Because, you know, there's, we don't, it takes a lot of sarcasm and stretching the truth. Like, a lot of hyperbole in comedy and stand-up. Because mm -hmm. most of it's just saying the most ridiculous things that, like, 
are not real. It's a joke. It's, it's all a, lot a of joke. twisting of of things and right. And I just I don't know. It's it's just hard to know because like uh, you mentioned your wife's. T- you know, it's difficult for her to catch it. And yeah, definitely my wife has a hard time. I mean, I don't think she could <laughs> she could handle it. Mm, you know, mm. you, you do have to have a high level of English as well. Definitely to, to get definitely. That, so. That's probably where I might fall down in terms of Japanese comedy as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it, there could just be a language barrier that's preventing me from getting certain bits. Right. Uh, like I can't imagine watching high level stand up with English as a second language. Uh, in English. Yeah. I, well, I don't. I, you'd miss so much. Very much so. Uh, and that and, could be what's happening with me in terms of Japanese comedy. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely mm. cultural, too. It's got to be. Mm. Which is weird, though, because, for example, um, I've, you know, Jim Jeffries is yep. a huge Australian comedian. Mm. And he's mm. not, he's a, he actually came to Tokyo last year. Right. Did a big show. Oh, okay. So the thing is, even though it is cultural, they, it's almost made worldly. Mm. Like anybody that speaks English could pretty much understand yeah. what they're talking about. Yeah. You know, so I think that's good with stand-up, too, is they kind of make it so not just somebody in one region or one culture could understand it. It's almost like, you know, everybody can enjoy this. It's a worldwide scene. Right. As long as you can understand English. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so that could be it. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. There's comedians that I like from Australia, a lot of them from America. So even growing up in Australia, I've watched uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, English comedians and a lot of uh, American comedians and all of this stuff still made sense. Yeah, there were occasional yeah. cultural references that I, I wasn't sure about. Like they might be talking about a popular cereal in America or something like that. And we didn't have it in Australia. Oh, right. But okay. just small things like that. But for the most part, they talk a lot about worldwide news and, and issues. And we knew about that in right. Australia. So we could understand what they were talking about. Yeah. And it was funny. And not even, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and not even that, just even like, uh, like you said before, the everyday type of, of life that mm. you can, you can relate to, you know, family, friends, something, some instance in a restaurant, you know, those are really good too. That's when, right. When you could just, right. almost anybody can relate to it. Yeah. And you know, once they say it, it's like a light goes off at oh, all. Why didn't I think of that joke? <laughs> you know? That's what Seinfeld did so well. Right. I think. Uh, just everyday situations, and famously, it is the show about nothing as well. Yeah. And it really is. There are episodes where just nothing happens, but there's still a plot, and there's still things going on, and there's still right. a lot of activity, and it's it's so well written. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> what makes it. Yeah, the, the parking lot, yeah, or the parking garage yeah. episode. They're just yeah. walking around a parking garage yeah. looking for their car. Have you ever done that? A little bit. I yeah. have actually done yeah, that. I mean, I've, I've been can... in a similar situation, <laughs> so not quite as much going on, but I've had similar things happen yeah. in a parking lot. So, so relatable. Yeah. But the way they turn that into an entire episode, amazing. It's, yeah, pretty amazing. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at some more of these Japanese style comedies. There's right. a four or five that I'll go through. One, I think that we're familiar with is called Manzai. This has been part one of two parts that Zane and I talk about comedy. If you enjoy, please stay tuned for the next episode where we will specifically talk about Japanese comedy. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you in the next episode.